Hi, I'm Phil Scott, and I'm going to show you how to unbox, set up, and maintain your Pulse Point laser welder. So we want to make sure that we remove all the staples so when we open it up, we don't get sliced by one of the staples by accident. Next, we're going to open it up and we'll start removing some of the smaller items. This is the argon hose or air hose. We have the Leica microscope eyepieces. We have some other stuff that we'll open up here in a few minutes. We also have a bottle of distilled or deionized water. And we also want to give it a quick visual inspection and make sure that nothing has been damaged in shipping. If it is, then you need to contact us right away. Next, we do recommend that you have help lifting the laser out of the box because it is rather heavy for one person. It can be done, but you don't want to drop an expensive piece of equipment. Make sure you have a good grip on it. Lift it straight up. I do recommend saving the box and the packing material in case it needs to come back for any kind of maintenance. You want to have that so it can travel safely. So next we're going to remove the shrink wrap from the machine. Next we're going to open up this first box. This has a bunch of our setup supplies in it. We have our power cord. We have our foot pedal. We have our Allen wrenches. These are gonna come in handy um, with our next step. So I'm gonna pull those out. We have our USB key. Uh, that'll go on the front of the machine and that keeps track of everything that's going on in the machine. We have our interlock block. The inner block block goes on the back over here, but we'll put that on after we put the foot pedal on and the power cord. Um, we have a spare protective lens, so we do need to keep track of that. It also comes with keys. I do recommend you, put, you keep one with the machine and you put one in the safe. Uh, we've got some test plates and then we've also got argon hookups. Or, or compressed air hookups. And then last, we have our uh, syringe for filling the machine. Next thing we're gonna do is directly above the sight glass, we're gonna take this little tray out and we're gonna pull out the two hoses that we're gonna use to put the water in the machine. So we're gonna, we're gonna take these two screws out and I recommend putting those in the tray up on top. And that's just so we don't lose them. Now there's a little tray here. We're gonna pull that out and you'll see these two hoses. You can pull those out. Sometimes the hose gets kinked right here and so you wanna check it and make sure it's not kinked. If it is, just squeeze it and that'll pop it open. So now we can take, set our wrench down and we're gonna pull these two caps off. Now the reason we're doing this part first is next, there's also another hose on the bottom of the machine and there's a little uh, path over here. We're going to slide the machine over towards the edge of the table and we're going to pull that hose out. If we don't take these two caps out first, the water can't drain out. So this machine is shipped with a shipping fluid. We need to drain that out. Then we're going to put the bottom cap back in. We're going to fill it with water and we're going to run the pump for about 10 minutes just to circulate the water through the machine. Now that we've slid the machine over to the edge of the table slightly, we're gonna reach up under and we're gonna pull this hose out and we're just gonna pull it until it stops. 
then I found that if I pinch that hose just a little bit when I pull this cap out, it doesn't go in my shoe, but it goes into a bucket. Okay, that's how much shipping fluid is in there. So now, now we're gonna put the stopper back in, push it back over a little bit. So now we're gonna fill the syringe with DI water and then we're gonna inject it into the machine. So now we fill the syringe and it doesn't matter which of these hoses we put put the water into. We can put it in either one. One allows the air that's within the machine to come out while we're putting the water in. If, if it was closed up, we couldn't get the water in. You can see the water levels starting to go up. And we're almost there. Okay, so we're at the max right now. The next thing we're gonna do is install our interlock, which bypasses us any kind of safety switches you might have on a door. Push that in. Then we're gonna plug in our power cord. And then plug, that, plug the other end into our electric. Now we're ready to turn the machine on. So we can see that the cooling fans are already running. I spun the machine around and now I have access to the uh, touch screen and I want to hit checkup. Checkup brings up the next screen and now I can turn on the water pump because I want the water to cycle through the machine. So I'll hit on. So you can hear the water cycling through the machine and that's flushing that shipping fluid out. Um, and we're gonna run that for about 10 minutes. Now while that's running, I can install the eyepieces on the machine. Okay, next we're gonna pull the caps off the microscope and we're gonna install the eyepieces. Wanna make sure that the, the two lines are zeroed on the eyepieces and I'd like to hold them up to the light and see which eyepiece has the crosshairs in it. Since I'm right eye dominant, I want the crosshairs in my right eye. This one doesn't have crosshairs, so it'll go on the left side. I'll double check, make sure this one has the crosshairs, and it does. I'll line these two lines up. Make sure it drops all the way down and lock it in place. While we were installing the eyepieces, the machine's been running for about 10 minutes, and now we can turn the pump off. We can spin the machine back around. So I swung the machine back around and we're gonna drain it and we're gonna refill it one more time. So we're gonna pull that hose back out. And I've got the caps off the end so the water will come out. I do pinch that just a little bit so again it doesn't uh, run into my foot if I'm not paying attention. Then I'll cap it back up, push it back in, tuck it up inside so it doesn't get pinched. Or Okay, now that we've drained it a second time and filled it back up, we can start buttoning it back up. We're gonna put the caps back in, the hoses. We're gonna tuck the tray with the hoses back up inside. And then we're gonna put the screws back in. Now, you can put them in all the way, um, but you may have to 
recheck your water level at the end of the day, especially the first day, because it's still cycling air through the system. So, um, you know, the first day you may have to take this back out and top, top the machine back off. The last thing we have to do on the back of the machine is install the foot pedal. Now the foot pedal does have a little pop open switch. Uh, you can lock it closed, but the foot pedal gets installed over by the uh, interlock block. And there's only one place left to plug anything in. And that's where the foot pedal goes. And you screw these down. And they don't have to be uh, super tight, they just have to be tight enough so the foot pedal stays engaged. Now the machine is ready to be turned around and it's ready to go. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of routine maintenance. So the first thing you want to do is minimum once a year, you want to change the DI water. Uh, that's going to be the same procedure that we just showed you during the setup. So we're going to turn the machine around, drain it, fill it. Uh, should do it once a year. I like to err on the side of caution, so I do it every six months. The water is inexpensive, so it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. We also want to make sure that the machine is powered off. The yellow triangle, which says this machine is hot and ready to fire, is off. So we're going to turn the key off. We're going to let it power down. That's going to put the, the machine in a safe mode. And we're also going to pull the key out. That way it can't be turned on by accident. So to give you the best uh, operating uh, or operation of the machine, you want to keep everything clean. You want to keep your eyepieces clean so you can see through them. There's also a sight glass up inside the machine and you really have to keep that clean. Um, you should clean it a minimum once a month. I like to keep it clean and clean it weekly. Um, I have a routine maintenance, so I keep that uh, sight glass clean. Uh, every Monday, I take it out, wipe it down, keep it clean. That way the light can get through it properly. Um, that's super easy to do. Take your protective lens out and there's a little screw at about the four o'clock position and then back towards the back at about the 10 o'clock position. And you unscrew those. Now this lens you need to handle pretty carefully. You don't want to get fingerprints in the middle of it. You want to hold it by the edge. You can hold it up to a white surface and see if, it, if it's dirty. It should be cleaned weekly. You can see bits of metal that may have splashed on it. There can also be smoke that's on the, on the lens. Use a high quality lens cleaning cloth and rubbing alcohol um, to clean that. A, you don't want to use any kind of solvents because that could possibly damage it. Um, but you want to keep your fingers off the center of that lens because the oil from your skin can actually burn onto the lens. So that's, that could start dissipating the light a little bit. So when it gets too bad, it's going to be time to change it. But um, you sh shouldn't have to change it more than about once a year, probably. But again, it depends on how hard you use it. So then we're going to drop it back into the machine or into the holder, again, not touching it. And then it's going to go back into the machine um, exactly opposite of how you took it out. Screw it back in place and you're ready to go on this filter. The next filter we need to uh, look at and probably look at it monthly. You can see if it gets dirty on the screen. There's a little screen that kind of helps protect it. And we're going to take this filter completely out and we can check it. So we have two screws towards the bottom and they just slip right out real easy. 
There's one screw, and I usually put them in the bottom of the chamber so I don't lose them. And this just slips down and out. Now, a new filter should look nice and white and clean. When this gets dirty, you won't be able to see through it. And then it's also not filtering properly. It's not drawing the air through there properly. And it will need to be changed. Very easy to take out and change. And these are pretty inexpensive. Now, once you get that filter changed and it's nice and clean, and another thing while you're inside the chamber, it's always a good idea to keep the interior of the machine clean because there are little bits of metal that uh, can pop off. Um, and so I like to wipe that up. And that metal, or, or the, the towels that I use to clean it up with, go into my recycling bin. The last filter that we want to check is our rear air filter. Um, we're going to take these two screws out and then there's a little handle that we pull out. And while we're back here, we can also check our water level and make sure that we're at the max water level. We don't want to overfill the water, but we do want to make sure it's up to the max so we get maximum cooling on the, on the machine. Again, I pull the screws out and I put them up in the little tray on top so I don't lose them or knock them off the table by accident. And these come out pretty easy. And you can check this and replace the filter as needed. It's going to depend on how um, clean your work environment is. And your filter is in here. If it needs to be changed, um, there are a couple screws, take those out, and then that slides out. Then you replace it with a fresh filter, reinsert it, and put your screws back in. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions on maintenance or setup, please give us a call.